So we're seeing yet more media complicity with Hamas. Just in the last few days, we saw the report that Israel struck a school in Gaza and a mosque and we didn't have any context for what happened and why they were targeting it. But we got straight from CNN as the State of Israel's official verified Instagram account posted. It says, look, CNN posted more than 90 Palestinians killed in Israeli strike on school and mosque sheltering displaced people, Gaza official says. This is your daily reminder that Hamas equals Gaza, Gaza's Ministry of Health. So the Gaza official thing almost seems incidental. And Israel goes on to say, have you ever questioned how Hamas is able to cite casualty numbers within minutes? Running numbers released by Hamas, a terrorist organization, which intentionally lies about casualties, is irresponsible and an insult to the ethics of journalism. More than that, where in this headline does it mention the fact that the Israeli strike was targeted there because they had strong intelligence that this was a place in which Hamas was operating from? Not just that, but actually had some senior commanders there. Charlotte Korchak, who we've had on JTV a number of times, put out a post saying, stop playing into Hamas propaganda, and it actually gets more people killed this way. Number one, Hamas set up a command center in a school. Two, Israel conducts a targeted strike on the school. Three, Hamas announces an unverified number of killed. Four, the media reports the bombing of the school with no mention of Hamas, and reports the death toll without any verification. Without, with no mention of Hamas, meaning no mention of Hamas operating from there. Five, world leaders condemn Israel for bombing a school and also neglect to mention the Hamas command center. Six, the media attack against Israel works just as Hamas intended. Seven, Hamas is incentivized to continue to set up command centers in schools and hospitals using Palestinians as human shields. Eight, eventually more Palestinians get killed and the cycle continues and you know what it's it's a double whammy here because number one you've got basically a modern day blood libel in in prior times the jews were told that they're baby killers they use the blood of babies for their jewish rituals non-jewish babies and that obviously sounds incredibly evil and wicked and when you say israel targets a school and mosques, and there's 90 people that are all displaced refugees seeking shelter, and they're the ones they killed, and that's, and it's basically sounding like that's who Israel targeted. When you're relying on Hamas figures, and you don't know the, who Israel was actually targeting. So all you're left with, as a random member of the public seeing that news story, is Israel targets schools and school children. That's that's the impression you'd have. How is that so different to a, one of those ancient blood libels? Not so different. And in addition, as Charlotte points out, all this does is incentivizes them, encourages them to do more of what they're doing, which leads to more people being killed, to more um, children being caught in the crossfire because the media and Western politicians are rewarding Hamas's evil tactics. It's a double whammy. It hurts the Jewish people, and it hurts innocent Arab children. It is so sick how people are complicit, complicit with Hamas. You know, if you stop rewarding this kind of behavior, people stop doing it. If Israel says, we can't fight Hamas because they use human shields, then they'll keep using human shields. It's only when Israel says, if you use human shields, it's not going to stop us, that they're no longer incentivized to. But they also will not be incentivized if the media stop playing along with these games. The same thing is true of hostages, by the way. When Arabs fight other Arab nations in wars or other tribes, they don't take hostages because they know it doesn't pay. They only know it pays with Israel. And that, by the way, should be pause for thought. Releasing murderers who can then go and plan future attacks in exchange for hostages. Is that moral? Of 
course, I pray every single day for the return of our hostages. It's the first thing I pray for every single day. And I hope that we do achieve it. But through military strength and might, releasing terrorists and evil people, it is so painful and tragic to say, only incentivize more hostages to be taken. In some ways, you hold all of Israel hostage. But the main point of this video is people are rewarding Hamas's tactics. And so let's not be fooled into thinking that when they do that, and they must do so knowingly, I think, people that write those headlines, they're, they're playing a very cynical game. But at the very least, for us, supporters of Israel, we should not be intimidated by the attempts to smear Israel, the attempts to shame the cause, the just cause and the just war that we support. If they choose to be complicit with Hamas, at the end of the day, they are the ones who are going to have to look themselves in the mirror and ask, what did I do? Did I bring this world to a better place? Or did I fuel the fire that was creating the problems? I know which side I want to be on. The question is for the media, which side do they want to be on? Thank you so much for watching. To watch another one, click here. To stay up to date with all our content, click here to subscribe. And if you're able to, you can help support JTV to grow and grow by clicking join below this video, where you can become a member and get perks, including early access to videos and private live discussions with me. But most of all, you'll be partnering with us on our mission to change the world.